there are some times where the idea of like, oh, look at the slur I'm not supposed to say. Look at the thing I'm not supposed to say. But I said it, so isn't that funny? I, I get it. I understand the appeal of that humor. I understood the appeal of it. Let's go ahead and talk about and talk about and just, I don't want to I don't want to make fun of people's looks, but if I said the politician who looks like a horse, it's not somebody Vosh is attracted to. You would you would know who I'm talking about, I hope. But I mean, it's also in the title, so you're cheating. Like whatever you say in the comment section is cheating. It's Lauren Bober. It's Lauren Bober. We need to talk about her. We need to talk about things she has said recently. It's it's it's, it's very important. Trust me. But. Horseface Bober has said some interesting things in the month of June. We'll get into that, but first let's get into the fan art section, and then we'll get into the cringe. First piece of fan art we have here is from Anobian. Said Cinderblock Chan. She prefers to be called Block Chan. Don't call her cute because she will slap you into next year. When did Cinderblocks become a thing? I don't know how Block Block Chan became a thing. I don't. But that's uh, fine. The next one, we'll get to the next one. The, the next one here is from Sakemano. Hello all, hope everyone's doing well. I'm new to the Discord, but I have been watching Cirrus's content on YouTube for some time. I think a year into the pandemic before I moved back from Japan. The lore video encouraged me to try doing fan art. This is the first ever full body drawing or work I have created through Photoshop, and I hope you like it. I like that it's... it's 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 regular Cirrus on the front, slime Cirrus on the back. I like that. I always like the transitional stuff. It's great. It is really, really fun. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and get into... I mean, come on. Come on! I'm not being mean, I'm being literal. And I look like a fucking truck hit me. I look ugly as shit. I am allowed to call her horse face. I am allowed to do that. Look, this is just a face you want to deny a sugar cube to. Anyways, Lauren Bober uses an anti trans slur at conservative conference as the audience laughs, because of course she does. She said, Bud Light, or... I mean, you can read... You can read, or T-slur fluid. The crowd then laughed as she paused, smiling and appearing proud of herself for using the slur in front of a large group of people. It's like being the white guy. It's like being the white guy who's just like super thrilled, like ecstatic that all of his friends laughed when he said the N-word. He's just like, guys, 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 I have something so funny. I have something so funny for you all. Just, just, just hear me out. Just hear me out. Just hear me out, okay? Okay, I'm gonna say something real funny. It's, it's, it's... A few moments later. It's not funny. It's not really funny. It's just... Dumb. It's like, oh, look at this word that hurts people and I can say it. Just stop. It's not difficult. But anyway, uh, she said they've lost 27 billion in revenue... Because you took a stand, and they'll gain it all back in a couple weeks. Her claim that Bud Light lost $27 billion in revenue due to their sponsorship of a 50-second Instagram video by trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney is wrong in multiple ways. First, she's referring to Anheuser-Busch's market value, not revenue earned, specifically by Bud Light. Bud Light is owned by Anheuser-Busch, which owns many popular beer brands in the United States. Second, the reason for the drop in market value can't be pinned on the video with Dylan Mulvaney. There are many forces affecting the company's market value and no reason to ignore all of them except for the Instagram video. Even the timing is off. The market value of Anheuser-Busch started dropping mid-May, a month and a half after Right Winger started boycotting Bud Light because of the April 1st video. And a bunch of tweets going into this. Oh, that's the it's just the tweets? I guess we'll read the tweets then. 
that November Coalition, sad that someone who votes on legislation affecting corporations doesn't know the difference between revenue and market capitalization. Revenue is income. Market cap is prices of all shares. She doesn't know and she doesn't care. Yes, Lauren Bober, be proud of being part of ruining a corporation. What could go wrong? Less taxes for the states, possibly a rise in unemployment, less revenue for the government, which causes our debt to rise, increasing the division in our country. St. Jimmy says, a company lost over $20 billion because we're bigots and hate everything our small brains can't understand. Crowd claps. I find it unbelievable in 2023 that there are people who still use derogatory terms like that. They aren't making fun of opponent politicians or supporters. They're laughing at an entire community of United Citizen fellows who is fr uh, fighting for their equal rights. We don't need to read the rest of the tweets. We, we basically got the idea there. Look, I get it. There are some times where the idea of like, oh, look at the slur I'm not supposed to say. Look at the thing I'm not supposed to say. But I said it, so isn't that funny? I, I get it. I understand the appeal of that humor. I understood the appeal of it when I was, you know, 15. And when I was, moreover, when I was 10 and I was told I wasn't supposed to say the fuck word and then I did one time and then I got grounded, but I was so proud of myself for saying the fuck word. And now it's just a thing I say normally and doesn't hurt anybody. I remember that feeling, that like, oh, look at me, I'm so edgy. I'm so edgy, everybody. Look at the bad words I can say. I get it. But you have to ask yourself, what are you gaining? What are you gaining when you do that? And if you're like, oh, well, my, my, my liberty, my liberty to say the word. No, you're always allowed to say the word. Nobody's stopping you from saying words. That's the thing. That people don't realize you're allowed to say slurs. It's legal to say slurs. What you have to ask yourself is when you are saying them, who are you affecting? Did you say it in the middle of a private conversation with a group of trusted friends where nobody is getting hurt? Or did you say it in front of everybody at a giant convention specifically so that you could aim targeted material at people who are trying to fight for their human rights? Which, which one is it? Because if it's the latter... I might have a problem. I don't give a shit about the things you say in the privacy of your own home with your best friends. I don't give a shit about that. And ideally, nobody would give a shit about that. But when you are on the public stage, when you are there letting everybody know your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, how you feel about a particular minority group, if the words you use to describe that group are not just disparaging, but they are words that are historically used specifically for the purpose of minimalizing that group and dehumanizing them, then I have to ask you, what's your goal? If the purpose of the word is dehumanization most of the time, and you're here doing that, why? You're not targeting Bud Light. Bud Light's collateral damage. You don't actually give a shit about Bud Light. Nobody gives an actual shit about Bud Light. You care. And it's not even Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan is rich and famous. Dylan will probably be fine no matter what happens here. Also, Prince Catspian, thank you for resubscribing. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Even if you've said something that Blizzy is not able to say. Because, you know, when you spell it like that, it just comes out kind of like this. Boop. But I have to try to figure out what your end goal is. If your goal is to just say the edgy line, eh, cool, privacy your own home. What the fuck ever. If your goal is making sure that a group of minorities know that they are a target and your audience are the people who are going to target them, then I can understand why you're doing that. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it something that I condone. It doesn't make it good. It makes it absolutely fucking horrible. I mean, just literally, using targeted language like that is horrible. Shame we don't do it more against Republicans. You know. Gotta fuck the Geo pussy somehow. But this is coming from Lauren Bober, who is... Can, can we just say failed politician at this point? Is that, a, is, that a, is that an accurate word we can use? It's a word I wish we could use for Marjorie Taylor Greene, but apparently they're having a cat fight somewhere. So good on them, I guess. Lauren also apparently spread a false claim that Starbucks banned pride decorations at one point, which as a company, they, they, they didn't. But, you know, hmm. it's, it's agitating to me. When we see people from the Daily Wire going on waxing lyrical about genocide and how wonderful it would be to eliminate transgenderism from public life, and yet 
here we have Lauren who's just like, yeah, let's just flippantly use this language. Remember, the targeted dehumanization of a minority group is one of the steps of genocide. Not steps on the way to genocide. De genocide is not the destination. It's a process. It is just simply a process from point A to point B. The point from the beginning is the elimination, at least in public, if not more so, of a group of people, whether it be gendered, whether it be religious, whether it be, you know, circumstances of birth, whether it be race, it doesn't matter. When you find that group of people and you try to enlist that targeted, we can bring up the 10 stages of genocide to show you what you're doing. It's not hard. It's not difficult at all. We can go right over here. We can look at the 10 stages of genocide. We have the classification of people, all cultures having categories that distinguish people between us and them. I, I'm, I'm, I have to say it. There is no difference between a trans person and you, except in some cases, the amount of medication they might have to take. But again, that's like saying there's a difference between you and somebody with diabetes. They don't, they're not a fundamentally different person just because they have diabetes. That's not how that works. Being on HRT does not make somebody a different person. And maybe this is something that hits closer to home now because I have so many close friends that are trans. And of course, there's, there's my girlfriend Saki. She is also trans. Maybe this stuff hits a lot harder and closer to home now for me because it, it is quite literally hitting closer to home. But it doesn't matter. We've got the classification down. We know they do that. Symbolization. That's just a thing that happens in general, whether it be because of solidarity or not. If we talk about solidar if we talk about symbolization that's been used on Jewish people, we have the echoes that were used on Jewish people before Jewish people started using the echoes on themselves as a way of trying to show that they would not be bullied, they would not be hit anymore for that. Same thing with trans people. Before the symbolization was able to actually catch on, we got the trans flag. That symbolization already happens, even if it's being used as a shield as opposed to a weapon. But then we get the discrimination. I don't know. Do you think the GOP does anything to discriminate against LGBTQ people, especially trans people? Well, there are over 500 different bills that have been proposed this year alone that are against trans people. I think that it's safe to say the discrimination has been happening there. And then we reach the part where Lauren is at, the dehumanization. It's when one group treats another group as second-class citizens. Again, 500 bucking bills. Members of a persecuted group may be compared with animals, parasites, insects, diseases, all stuff the Daily Wire has done, by the way. When a group of people is thought of as less than human, it becomes easier to control or even murder them. I want to reiterate, the steps of genocide are not the steps to genocide. They're the steps of genocide. We are inarguably at stage four. There is no way to deny we are at stage four, as people like Lauren Boebert constantly show with how they treat trans people in front of the GOP at large. But when I mention the GOP at large, the fifth step is organization. I don't know. Do you think 500 bills being proposed in a single year against a single group is organization enough? I think it probably is. Polarization? Gee, I wonder if America is polarized about trans people right now. I wonder if there may be some examples, you know, potentially from certain beer companies that we can use to try to talk about polarization in regards to trans people. That's, that's, that's such a weird thing. And you know, it's hard to argue where preparation. It's not hard to argue where persecution. But, you know. Stage 9 is where it gets dicey. People have this really awkward belief that we are not dealing with a genocide in the United States. Because how could we be? Trans people aren't being genocided. I, this is where I'm going to go ahead and say. There are people who I used to work with, who I used to be friends with, that do this stupid shit too, where they believe that, oh, we're not throwing the trans people in the camps right now, so a genocide isn't happening. But per the definition of genocide, 
the 10 stages required to have one. We have inarguably gone to stage 4. We have arguably gone to stage 8. Don't let us get to stage 9. Insert end of video tagline here. <laughs>